The next problem will be even quicker. Um, I chose problem 6 because it's the next one on the difficulty scale and also we can learn a new interesting method of the Scala collection library which is the map method. I read problem 6 to you. The sum of the squares of the first 10 natural numbers is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and so on until 10 squared equals 385. The square of the sum of the first 10 natural numbers is 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on until 10 all summed up and squared and that is 3025. Hence the difference between the sum of the squares of the first 10 natural numbers and the square of the sum is 3025 minus 385 equals 2640. Find the difference between the sum of the squares of the first 100 natural numbers and the square of the sum. So again we have a degenerate case here for which a solution is given and we're asked for the solution for a larger case. Yeah, Let's get to the editor. Ooh, there we are. Now I've copied the um, problem description below the program right now because um, it's quite long. Now let's start again with a Java-like solution, an imperative style solution. Uh, what we gotta enumerate here is first of all um, the sum of everything which will start at zero and then um, the sum of the squares of all the numbers which also starts at zero. And then we gotta make a loop from 1 to 100. In this case I chose to use 2 because we want to include the last number 100 until would exclude it. Now, in every iteration of the loop we increase the sum by i and we increase the sum of squares by i squared which is i times i. Like most other programming languages with the exception of perhaps Haskell, uh, Scala unfortunately doesn't provide any exponential operator. So you gotta build the square like this. And in the end we want to print out the result which is, oh let me look it up, um, the difference between the sum of squares minus the square of the sum. So sum of squares should be easy, sum of squares is that, and minus the, not the sum, but the square of the sum, so we got a square sum and that should be the solution. So let me compile this quick. Yeah, great. And run it. Oh. It's a very large negative number. So something obviously went, went wrong here. I guess I just got it wrong. Yeah. Must be the other way around. We gotta subtract subtract the sum of squares from the square of the sum because the sum the square of the sum is larger. Sorry about that. Let's run our program once more. Yeah. Now the number is uh, pretty big and uh, positive. Uh, let's look up if that's the correct solution. Scroll down and yeah. It is exactly the number that we got. I will switch back to the editor. There you go. It's the same number. So this solution is correct. Now, when we want to build the sum of all numbers from 1 to 100 in Scala, there's probably an easier way than to, than to use a for loop. And you might already know this one because we can easily build a stream of the numbers from 1 to 100 and then make it sum. So you can assign it here already 1 to 100 is a stream and in this stream we can call the method that you already know which is called sum. So we can delete this line, we don't need to uh, enumerate it anymore. Great. 
uh, but uh, the sum of squares is something different and this is where the map method that I mentioned in the beginning comes into play because uh, we would like to do something like that 1 to 100 and then I invent a method name which doesn't exist S square each one and then build the sum of that if that would work we could also delete this line now square each one what I mean by that is iterate over the collection in this case uh, a stream and return another stream in which the same elements are contained only squared. That method doesn't exist in Scala, obviously, because streams do not only contain numbers but also other stuff. Um, but we can do something quite similar like that. Every time that you want to convert the elements of a collection, you would use the map method. The map method gets some parameter and returns another stream in this case with the elements of the original stream modified in some way. And how they get modified uh, is by uh, a method, uh, by a function that you pass to the map, map method and it will be applied to each of the elements. So we use an anonymous function here obviously. Uh, it should map to every x should be mapped to x times x, which is the square of x. Pretty neat. Once again, it's cool that we can do this. And now these two variables don't actually need to be variables anymore. Their values cannot change, so we will declare them as values. So they are constant, and now the warning also disappears, as you might have noticed. Um, and that's pretty much the solution. I will run it once more, so you can see the results correct. It's compiling. Oh, there you go. Um, the important thing about this episode here is the map method. Um, it works on every Scala collection. And when I say collection, I'm actually using the wrong word because Scala has its own collection hierarchy and the equivalent of um, what you know from Java is the Java util collection interface would be in Scala the um, trait called seq, S-E-Q, which is short for sequence. So from now on I will not talk about collections anymore, I will talk about um, sequences and use the proper term. Uh, every sequence has the map method and um, for example in real life you might have a use case where you for example want to get all the account names and you have a sequence of account instances and um, yeah let's say we have uh, from somewhere a sequence uh, of account objects which um, of course account is a class which doesn't exist in this context but let's just assume we get it from somewhere and you want to have all the names of the accounts then it's pretty easy you can just say accounts and now let's say it has a getter get name and the result of this will be a sequence of all account names and um, yeah in Scala you usually don't use the get prefix for getter, uh, for getter methods you simply use name and for example, if you want to have, um, let's say the account has a forename and a surname, and you want to uh, just have all the forenames of the accounts, and um, only have uh, unique occurrences of each one of them, then you might, for example, um, call the toSet method, which is also provided by every single um, Scala sequence implementation, and then you would have uh, a list without duplicates. Doing this in Java is, of course, also very possible, but it would take many more lines and a stupid for loop that um, is not as easy to understand as this for me. Now I will remove the example lines here. And if you look, for example, at the sum, it says 1 to 100 sum. This is almost understandable without Scala knowledge. 
Um, the second line is a little bit harder to understand. You need to know um, what the map method does, uh, but as soon as you know it, I think understanding Scala code becomes really easy and you don't have many lines that you need to scan, um, a for loop that you need to understand. Uh, it's pretty concise here. So I hope you appreciate this as much as me. For me, Scala has become the language of choice right now. And um, yeah, let's see what we get in the next episodes of this series of tutorials. Bye!